A YouTuber by the name of ShepskyDad recently made a video giving new status conditions to every type, and uh, it got a couple of views, so I'm gonna implement all these types in the game. Now, if you're familiar with Pokemon, you will know that there are already several status conditions in the game, like Paralysis and Poison. Status conditions affect gameplay in ways such as damaging the Pokemon or preventing them from attacking. These new status conditions add some clever twists to the old one. I don't want to bore you with all the details, so I'll just highlight some of my favorites. The rock type gets the petrified condition, which turns your Pokemon into stone, preventing them from attacking. This status condition is removed once you are hit with an attack. The fighting type gets reckless, which forces the Pokemon to only be able to choose attacking moves, and it also adds recoil damage to these attacks. I really liked these ideas, so I took it upon myself to use my coding expertise to implement these in the game. Okay, so now it's time to actually set up the project, but ROM hacking is a very daunting task, so how do we do that exactly? As a professional software engineer, I am really good at copying other people's code. Thanks to Pret, who described themselves as a band of dedicated fanboy misfits attempting to reverse engineer our favorite video games, we will have a much simpler time. You see, they have decompiled the Pokemon Emerald source code, which means that we can write code in C rather than having to modify assembly directly. Listen to my best friend Sebastian on why this is good. Ariel, listen to me. For all languages, it's a mess. Programming in C is better than anything they got over there. They have a GitHub repo with a very long series of steps to get everything set up, which I definitely did not spend several hours on. Long story short, Windows and Linux do not mix well. The upside is that you can look like a very cool hacker when installing everything. Now the first thing I did was install a 100% legitimate save file with a bunch of Pokemon that I could experiment with. Thank you, Blackwing. So now it's time to look through the code and figure out how status effects actually work. After looking around for a little bit, I found that all of the moves are stored in a huge array. So to test this, I decided to change the percent chance of an attack. In this case, I have a Salamence that knows Ember, so I'm gonna make Ember always burn. However, I forgot that my Salamence was level 50 because I just found the nearest patch of grass, so uh, I had to do some exploring. So I flew over to Sutopolis City, figuring that there's water Pokemon there, and then I went surfing. I wound up surfing for quite a while, and I didn't encounter any wild Pokemon, and then I realized Sutopolis City doesn't have any wild Pokemon. Huh? So I flew over to Moss Deep City, which is right on the ocean. After I surfed, I was so excited to find a tentacle, but then it was level 6. I eventually ran into a trainer which finally had Pokemon that wouldn't die in one hit to my Salamence. And with this long journey coming to an end, I finally proved that I could modify pre-existing effects. So now it's time to add our first effect, the Infestation. The Infestation effect damages the affected Pokemon by 1 16th of its health every turn. I know, we've never seen an effect do that before, right? But I'm adding a twist. It halves the speed of the affected Pokemon. It's a cross between the Vanilla Poison and Paralysis effects. So now it's time to actually implement it. Really cool coding montage, go! Freeze the game. So how do I add a status effect to the game? In the simplest possible terms, the way you add a new status condition to the game is adding the infestation effect to the list of battle effects, setting the effect of the attack scratch to this infestation effect, add the infestation effect you just created to the list of move effects, make the move effect infestation have a status effect which causes the status condition infestation, then you have to do a bunch of random stuff to register the new status. Oh yeah, and remember how I said we were exclusively going to be programming in C and avoiding assembly? Well, that was a lie. So now that you have an overview of what we have to do, now it's time to fix the game freezing. This is where debug statements come into play. The very important debug statement, your mother, is actually what solved the error. See, there was a memory overflow error due to something being too large. Removing your mother from the code fixed that. The keen eyed among you will have noticed that I actually check for infestation. This is critical as now I'm able to start implementing the actual effects of infestation. The end turn damage will be easy as I found this do battle or end turn effects method. So all you have to do is add an end turn custom effect, as you can see into this enum, and then as long as it's less than or equal to the end turn battler count, you should be fine, right? So it wasn't even detecting the infestation. I had to put it before the battle account. So now it's time to test it out. I made the scratch attack always give the infestation effect. It uses the poison visual indicator, but the important thing is up here. Look, the health bar decreases. The next step is making a very beautiful animation. I'm gonna, um, borrow from already existing animations. The result looks something like this. To accomplish this, I did have to use scripting with assembly-like syntax. Now it's time for your favorite red arrow, look! I also figured out how to list this on the health bar. I'm not gonna get into the nitty-gritty and how I did this. Let's just say it caused some errors. 
By now you've had enough of the infestation effect. And I have some good news. We're done. It's time for more code. So remember how complicated it was just to add a single status effect? It's a 14 step process. I made a Google Doc. Well now I'm just adding all of them at once. So theoretically it should be easier to add the rest of them. To make time fly, throw your clock out the window. In other words, I'm trying to say it's time for the next status condition. The piercing condition damages by 1 16th each turn and halves your defense. Since I set up the boilerplate, this should be easy. Again, I'm using scratch to give the status. Oh my god, what the f*** is that? It looks like it's something from the Shadow Realm. After some off-camera mining, I did it. It uses the Metal Claw animation. Wow, look, it's the same status effect as before, except now it's under a different name and animation. I know, I know, but stick with me because the next ones are pretty cool. There is one important thing that I added. The party screen displays the list of status conditions, so I also must display this. I had a lot of trouble getting this one in. I mean, look at those debug statements. Basically, every status condition is three 8x8 tiles in memory. And it's really stupid, but you have to create these animation frames for every one of these tiles, even though they're completely static images. After all those shenanigans, I finally got it working. Did you miss this guy? I certainly did. The rest of these status conditions are going to be pretty quick. The null status negates all type interaction, just like how my life has left me feeling. I found this type calc function, and if you know something about Pokemon, the struggle move doesn't have any type interactions, so I'm just going to add my effect right over there. And uh, remember that cursed image from before? Yeah, I figured it was perfect for the null effect, so there it is. To prove to you it worked, I tested it on an Aaron. Aaron is a rock steel type, which four times resists the normal type tackle. But in this case, it was nulled, so it took neutral damage. Alright, next effect, go. Not this again. It forces Pokemon to choose damaging moves and then damage themselves. You can read, okay? Here's the animation. I copied from the focus energy move, which is very fitting for this effect. And the status effect has the correct graphic. So now here's an example of Poochyina taking recoil damage. And for the love of god, don't ask how I did this. It involves assembly. Alright, we're gonna speedrun the next effect. Alright, so remember the beginning of the video, the petrified effect? Yeah, that was too hard to figure out, so we're doing this instead. It slows you down, and every time you're hit, you have 50% chance to flinch. Here's the animation, now I have some time to breathe. Okay, look, cool. The effect is starting. Well, let's do an instant replay, because that was so cool. Petrified effect is in the corner. Fancy red arrow. Oh wow, he flinched! That's time! World record, baby! Vegetarians get excited. It's time for your effect. Rooted prevents the opponent from switching out Pokemon JHGFF. Not a typo. So there's multiple things we need to do. First, we need to make it so you cannot run from battle. Then we need to make it so you can't switch out a Mon that is rooted. Finally, and very importantly, you can't switch into a rooted Mon. My first attempt didn't go quite as expected. As you can see, Pidge's keen eye fear wild poochie. You know, what the heck is that? But eventually I figured it out. Look, now you can't escape. You think these sound effects are annoying? Watch this. That's what I constantly hear when developing this for your entertainment. Then I got the switching stuff done. Listen to this noise. See, it works. Oh, and I guess the final thing you need to see is the animation. Look, pretty cool. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Helen Keller. What do you think our next effect will be? You guessed it, blindness. Blindness decreases your accuracy and prevents you from seeing the enemy sprite. I thought the null animation was very fitting, so I used the same one. The other key thing to take in here is that when you attack, you can't see how much you damage the enemy by. The next effects are volatile status conditions, which means that they get removed when the Pokemon switches out. Flustered multiplies the attack, special attack, and speed of the affected Pokemon by three quarters. Originally called the Fear Condition, the Enraged Condition increases your attack by 1.25 and decreases your defense by 0.75. The Spook Condition increases your offense and your speed, but you take one quarter damage in health every turn. And last but not least, the Shaken Condition decreases your defense and your special defense. It's time for the fun part. We're gonna put our status effects on Pokemon moves. To do this, I looked through the list of moves and just decided based on intuition what moves should have the effects. For example, the Peck attack now has a 50% chance of giving the Flustered effect. I looked through the list of gym leaders and really tried to make sure each of them had their own specific status effect. For example, with Roxanne, her signature move Rock Tomb I made have a 100% chance to petrify the opponent. Here's the entire list of moves that I've changed to add my custom status effect. The ones that have the black backgrounds are really quick one-line code changes, but the ones that aren't, I had to add in custom code. As an extra note, I actually fixed the Mud Sport and Water sport because they were previously kind of useless moves and now they are the official status effect moves for flooded and shaken. If you'd like to play test this there's a link in the description. Personally I'm gonna try to nuzlocke this. This video took over 50 hours for me to make so if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe. With that I'm out. See you in the next video.